Johnny and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business? We can help. Again, we'll talk about that music, Brian. Our guest today, including Elliot Friedman, standing by for the first time in a long time, brought to you by the Waddling Dog Pub. Fall right around the corner, and that means the Waddling Dog gearing up for another exciting season of sports and entertainment. Catch every Canucks, Seahawks, Lions, Whitecaps game on one of their 17 TVs. Uh, swing by their attached liquor store to pick up your Donnie and Dolly swag, including hats and T-shirts. People doing that today, as a matter of fact, we saw evidence of that earlier in the show. There are countless reasons to come sit and stay at the Waddling Dog. He joins us now, Donnie and Dolly regular. Great guy. Speaking of the first time in, in a long time, from Hockey Night in Canada and the 32 Thoughts podcast, great guy, Elliot Friedman. Thanks for this, sir. How are you? Good. I just went for a walk. I looked like a waddling dog, so I fit <laughs> oh, perfectly good. in you this segment. Good. Yes. Oh, How are you guys? Good summer? Very good, good summer? Well, it's a very good, a good summer. We talked about it earlier in the show. Uh, we did all sorts of things. Uh, Rick saw nice. a, fi a fire show. Um is it possible for Elliot Friedman to relax in the summer? No. Does that happen? Yeah, yeah, I did. Like this summer was probably uh, there was a bit more than normal. I really tried to, uh, you know, I'll tell you this: a life hack. Mm -hmm. um, I I got a new iPad, mm -hmm. and I did not install Twitter on it. Whoa, so good for you! That's yeah, like that's you know that's one of the things I'm trying is having social media available to me less in certain places. So I know when I have my iPad, it's a social media free zone. We know though that you did spend time in Europe uh, and, mm -hmm. and spent time with some hockey types. Tell us about your time there. Yeah. So the league and the players association do what like a car wash where they bring like one or two players per team. Usually it's one player per team to a central location. Like for example, when you watch the opening of the Sportsnet uh, hockey shows, there's, you know, the players skating out and shooting a puck at the camera or something like that. All that stuff is filmed there. And also you can do some interviews there. So the, the North American one is next week in Vegas, but the European one, which they hadn't done in a couple of years was, uh, was the second, Second last week of August in Paris, and so we sat down. We did a bunch of interviews there, and uh, we still have some stuff with Moritz Seider and Tim Stutzla mm -hmm. and uh, Leon Dreisaitl that's going to come out in TV. JT Miller, Elliot, as we switch mm -hmm. uh, gears here, are you surprised the Canucks came up with a contract extension for him? Yeah, yes, I was, Don, and, and you know I think even JT Miller was themselves, and I know Patrick Alvin is talking right now, but one of the things that is very clear here, and I know you guys have Brian Bartlett on today, mm -hmm. is that this went from nowheresville to Don in about five days. <laughs> and yeah. uh, the only the only way that happens is if, because, you know, before, I, I don't think this summer, and, you know, Rick's is, Rick's is plugged in as anybody, and he can tell me if he thinks I'm wrong, but I don't think before this was trending in that direction. I, I don't think we were going there. And then, you know, what happens is a team says, okay, we've decided we're going to get this done. And, you know, I've talked about this a little bit. I think the market changed this summer. You saw a 30-year-old Jonathan Huberto, the same age as Miller, get a big extension. You saw a 32-year-old Nazem Kadri get a big 7x7 seven seven contract. And I think the Vancouver Canucks realized that that was a fair market for JT Miller. And I, I think the other thing, and I know this is being hotly debated in Vancouver right now, is that this organization is not in a position where it wants to rebuild or retool. And it looked at it and said, what does our picture look like without JT Miller, whether he's traded or he leaves as a free agent? And what do we have to replace him with? And, and they felt the more prudent move was, was keeping him. Okay, Elliot, so uh, JT Miller's done. Now the mm -hmm. focus switches to Bo Horvat. Uh, what are you hearing about his contract? Well, a couple of things. You know, first of all, and I, I, I'm, you know, as I'd heard of last night, yesterday, or the days after Miller, like you kind of reach out and you hear what's out there. I, I didn't hear much. I, I think it was pretty quiet on Horvat. Now, the, the one thing that scares me about saying that is the whole summer it was quiet on Miller until the Vancouver Canucks made a phone call. So it's very clear that one thing we've learned about the Canucks in the last week is if they are motivated to get something done, they will get something done. I think with Horvat, there's been a little bit of a gap. But look, like if, if JT Miller is an $8 million player, 
Bo Horvat, who just missed 40 goals last year, he's not far behind if he is behind at all. So I, I think the, the Canucks know what it's going to take to get Horvat done. I still believe that is their goal. I don't have any sense at this point in time. Like last year, all last year, people were, were calling them asking about Horvat, and the Canucks were saying no. I, you know, has that changed? I, I don't think it has. I, I think the Canucks have grinded with Horvat just like they grinded with Miller, but they changed their mind and got Miller done. I, I don't see any reason why they can't change their mind and get Horvat done. I think he's too good and he's too valuable. He's he's a he's a top two center. Like I mean, how do you how do you let guys like that walk when you know what it's going to take to sign them? Elliot, you talk to a ton of people uh, around the National Hockey League. What is uh, what are people saying about the Canucks? Uh, you know, the new management. Uh, you know, all these signings uh, on July thirteenth. What is the perception out there about Vancouver around the league? Look, I, I think everybody in the league knows Jim Rutherford, and they know he's a gambler. And, uh, you know, I know Alvin's meeting the media today, and uh, he's the GM, but this is still Rutherford's team. And and he runs it uh, he, uh, the way that he likes to run it. And, uh, you know, he's he's not afraid, and he's got his opinions, and he's got his way about doing things, and he's in charge. And Jim Rutherford is a gambler. And I think if the if there was any question about the Vancouver Canucks willing to rebuild, I think we got the answer last weekend. They are not interested in a rebuild. They are going for it, whether you agree or not. I still think he's trying some things. I still think he's looking at his blue line. Um, you know, whether it's a trade or a free agent signing. I know Rick that you've mentioned Calvin DeHaan's name. Uh, I do think that they will try to add to their blue line uh, before the season begins. Elliot, um, Brian Bartlett touched on this earlier on our show, but what are your expectations, and a lot has been talked about uh, regarding the subject, what are your expectations for the NHL salary cap? I think that, uh, well, we one of the people we interviewed in France was Bill Daly, and he seemed to be confident based on some initial projections. Like last year at the Board of Governors meeting in December, they said there would be a raise in two seasons, after two seasons, this year and next uh, then when there was the COVID outbreak over Christmas and Canadian teams especially got shut down for fans, there was a pushback that it might be three seasons. And uh, Daly said uh, uh, two weeks ago that the initial estimates he'd seen is that we might be back to two seasons. So I think we're going to see a situation where the cap goes up, not after this season, but after, in the summer of 2024. I think what's going to be interesting, uh, Don, is a few years ago in the NBA, there was a real debate about do we have the cap go up by a big number one year or do we gradually try to bring it in? And I'm curious to see if there's going to be any conversation about gradually trying to raise it instead of hmm. one big bump in two summers. Yeah. Uh, one more, Elliot, if you, if you don't mind. Just your opinion of I the don't. job that uh, Brad Tree Living did. Uh, in the summer, losing some big names, grabbing some big names. You know, my grandmother always had a saying, you plan, God laughs. Uh, the Calgary Flames had a plan that was to re-sign uh, Johnny Goudreau and, and Matthew Kachuk, and God laughed at them. And Goudreau actually initially had said yes and then changed his mind. So you have a choice in that moment. You can uh, cry your heart out and, and go into the fetal position, or you can find something to do. And I don't know if it would have turned out this good for them until Florida put those two guys on the table. When Florida put Huberto and Uyghur on the table, like I think Daryl, I think like some people there, like Daryl Sutter, their opinion was get me good players and we'll be in it. You have to have good players available to you. And Florida did, and they pounced and they got a deal done, and then they were very aggressive with Kadri. You know, they have a great goalie. You guys know them. They have a deep defense, they're very deep down the middle. I think they're going to be a very, very challenging team to watch. And I'm looking forward to Kadri and McDavid put sticks up each other's noses for the next seven years. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Elliot, just one more. Uh, Canadian hockey had a horrible summer. Uh, so much, uh, you know, drama, so much bad stuff happening hockey there. Canada. Yeah. yeah, Hockey Canada. What needs to change, uh, Elliot, at the higher levels in, in Hockey Canada? Well, I, I didn't like what happened yesterday. I, I think that you have to... Uh, in, in terms, I thought 
Uh, unfortunately, the women's gold medal was overshadowed uh, by the trophy pre- by the medal presentation. I, I don't. I think that was a, that didn't need to happen. And it shows bad judgment. Like the one thing, Rick, I do believe is there's still stuff here we don't know. I I think I I do believe you have to do proper investigations and properly say, tell us all the facts. I I'm always very nervous about uh, saying anything before all the facts are out. But what I didn't like about yesterday was it showed to me bad judgment. And I think at this time you have to err on the side of caution. Always try to do like if something doesn't seem like a good idea, don't do it. And uh, I think you have to be transparent. You have to be honest. And uh, you have to show that you have the right, that your goal is to uh, lead a- into a better place. And uh, I just what happened yesterday, it seemed to me more selfish than trying to do the right thing. Yeah, yeah and that we're talking about the embattled CEO of Hockey Canada, Scott Smith, uh, handing, handing out the medals. It, it, was, it was not a good luck, a good look rather. Uh, Elliot, good to have you back. We look forward to the hockey season, uh, especially since uh, you're going to be part of our show. Thanks so much. Great to be back, guys.